readings from a water storage tank have rocketed six and a half thousand times higher in two days. A powerful typhoon swept through Japan earlier this week, causing toxic water to be released into a drainage ditch leading to the Pacific Ocean. It's compounded what's been a worsening situation at the plant in recent months. As Irina Galushko explains. Two and a half years to admit the painful truth. Japan needs help. We are wide open to receive the most advanced knowledge from overseas to contain the problem. My country needs your knowledge and expertise. The past few months have been marked by growing problems at Fukushima. Several workers have been exposed to radiation, the levels of which are reportedly at their highest since the accident in 2011. And on top of that, there's the issue of leakage. This is the reactor. Inside it is the reactor core, the actual nuclear part of the plant. This is water which is used to cool the nuclear core so it doesn't burst in flames. That water obviously has to go somewhere, so it goes into a special container which is slightly below the reactor itself where irradiated water is stored and then filtered. Unfortunately, at the Fukushima plant, the situation is such that this container with the irradiated water is located on the very seashore. This is the ocean. And the problem with the Fukushima is that there is a leak, supposedly, right here. So from there, the irradiated water is flowing into the Pacific Ocean. Sadly, Russia has a lot of experience to offer when it comes to wiping up remnants of a nuclear catastrophe. It has had its own deadly lesson a quarter of a century ago. Fukushima should be treated just like Chernobyl, as a wreck that must be retired and put in a sarcophagus. The problem with Fukushima is that they can't decide whether they want to close it or to keep it going. Closing the plant doesn't seem to be an option for TEPCO, the company operating the facility which many in Japan blame for the failure to handle the Fukushima crisis. In fact, TEPCO is pushing towards reopening its Kashiwazaki Kariwa facility, the world's largest nuclear power station. It was shut down in 2007, following reports of radioactive leaks after a powerful earthquake. But the power giant seems undeterred by the prospect of having two malfunctioning nuclear power stations on its hands, maybe hoping an international effort would solve both problems at the same time. Irina Galushko, RT. Fukushima's troubles turned back, of course, to the earthquake and tsunami that ravaged Japan in March of 2011. Now, it took a year for Japan's government to admit that the nuclear disaster was caused by the improper handling of the crisis and the plant's operator, TEPCO, well, they say it could have been avoided. Now, two years after the crisis hit, the radiation is recorded in local fish and uh, a leak discovered at a storage tank with contaminated waters. And when TAPCO finally admits that uh, the leaking toxic water is leaking toxic water, it also revealed that up to 300 tons of uh, that radioactive leak was also found in water flowing into the ocean. Um, now, Robert Jacobs, who's an associate professor at Hiroshima Peace University, says there's no immediate solution for the crisis. Nobody really knows how to solve the problems at Fukushima. There is no nobody who has solutions to these. The problems at Fukushima are unprecedented. So even bringing in outside expertise all that they can do is try to problem solve. There's no solution that other countries have that they can come in and uh, fix the reactors or rather uh, shut down the contamination, shut down the leaks. So even other countries coming in and bringing their expertise will hopefully bring more professionalism than TEPCO has shown in the last two and a half years. But even those experts will be at a loss as to how to solve the immense problems that we'll be facing for decades in Fukushima.